let's optimize the Brocken Geigen Premium. This is a very formidable car. I've seen this type of car beat mock frames. It also depends, of course, on who's building it, what they're doing to the car, like all the little things, the little tricks that you need to know to get this car to be raceworthy. So here's some of the things that I've discovered by just observing and talking to people. And so one of the things that I've noticed is, okay, FMA racers, you need to have those little sponge brake things jammed into your battery pack. So as you see here, you need to do something like this because the big problem with these battery contacts is they're going to always bend inward at the most inopportune times. So if that happens, your car is not going to function correctly. It might stop. It might totally, totally stop until you rebend the contacts outward so that the batteries can contact them properly. This has happened to me on many occasions. So um, I've spoken to various people about this and they say that this is actually a legal thing to do. So try it. Uh, this is one of those things where it's not your mileage may vary, it's just going to improve your overall racing experience. So make sure you have that. Make sure also that you have a greatly tuned motor. So your motor has to be like broken in totally awesomely. Uh, if you follow my Venom tuning break-in techniques, you'll be able to get a very fast motor right out of the box. Pretty cool. So the second thing that I want you to also consider is some of the fastest rocking guidance I've seen. They they just like, they just blow by the competition. They blow by other Brocken Kuiken premiums. And I was always wondering about this. I was like, what is happening here? When my car jumps and it lands, something's going on where sometimes the car just completely stops before it continues on. Sometimes it just slows down tremendously. And here's what I've noticed. Look at the wheel wells of this car, right? They are so, the cowl, the wheel wells are so close to the tires themselves that when they land, they end up squashing against the tire and that temporarily stops the car or slows it down. So one of the things I was wondering about, like I saw this one racer's very formidable racer. I saw his car and I noticed that there wasn't this part in the front. And I was like, wait, did he cut something off of his car? Cause that's not legal. But then I looked at it and I was like, wait, you can remove this part right here. Right? So, so I looked at his car and I was like, that's what he did. So if you just remove this top part here, very, very carefully, there you go. If you remove this piece, you reduce the weight of the car by three grams. And now it goes from being an 88 gram monster to an 85 gram monster, which is in line with the weight of the mock frames. It, the weight is just distributed very differently from a mock frame. As you see the mock frame here, the weight is distributed all across the length of the chassis. Whereas the bulk of this is like right spread out here in the center. So, hmm, pretty cool, right? This whole thing is going to be landing flatter than a mock frame would on the same track. Very cool. So that actually makes this car a lot more stable than a mock frame. Now, the third thing I've noticed, okay, so now that we've removed this front part here so that there's nothing interfering with the front tires, what are we gonna do about the back tires? Ah, okay. So remember that sponge brake technique that we used behind the battery contacts of our car? You can also add a little bit of sponge right here underneath the cowl on each side. Now, this is something I kind of figured out on my own, but you know, like you could like, look at your car and just study it and then you can eventually come up with these kinds of ideas on your own. So here's, here's the cool thing. Okay, so notice when I'm pressing down, it springs back up. Now you might not be able to see it, it's a very subtle movement, but when I press down, there's a little spring action that brings it back up. And so it gives you a fraction of a millimeter of extra space right there. So the cowl never hits the tires. Now, is this legal? It's about as legal as putting sponge brake behind your contacts <laughs> um, in your motor, right? In the, in the motor. Thing. So I think that this should be a legal thing if it's not, but I think it is. <laughs> I mean, you're just trying to prevent the cowl from hitting the tires. So I don't see anything wrong with that. But if you think that there is something wrong with that, you can leave some comments down below. The thing is, you can also try to bend the plastic upwards so that it will try to stay away from, from the tire. You could always do that too. I mean, if that's legal, then why not shove some sponge under there, right? You're not using the sponge as an actual brake. You're just using the sponge to prevent the cowl from hitting the tires. And I think that should be legal. So yes, three little tips and techniques to improve and optimize your Brocken Guided Premium. If you enjoyed this video, please slam the like button, subscribe to my channel. You'll see more videos just like this one. Until next time, everybody, see you, bye.